Okay, um, it seems like every time we have a CAPA meeting, we have a new holy grail in fishery stock assessment. Um, the holy grail this time is estimating absolute abundance and uh, there's new techniques that have come out that have um, good promise in actually providing us an estimate of absolute abundance. And Hans is gonna give us the first talk about this uh, with the close kin analysis. Thank you, and um, good, good, <coughs> good morning, everyone. So I'll, let me see if I stand here. Yeah, so uh, um, this is uh, called uh, TOWADS, uh, closed kin uh, software, because there doesn't exist any uh, general software package today. So there are people who know how to do closed kin, kin modeling, and among those are the previous speaker and the speaker after me. But uh, what I'm thinking about is what kind of concepts do we need to uh, create something that is fairly general, right? And I'm starting with a hypothesis about the future, and that is that one day you will have a, you will take a DNA sample of your uh, every fish uh, that you, is being caught, and you will immediately have uh, the, the full uh, genealogy of uh, of these uh, of your catches. Right, and I'm dating that to uh, year 2050, which is safely after I've, I've retired, because that's very important when you make a prediction. It should be always be dated after no, you have retired. <laughs> yeah, that, but that was the only picture I could find. So. <laughs> but but anyway, so this is the reason why I'm thinking close kin will be important. So. But you don't have to wait until 2050. People are doing it today. And all you need as a rule of thumb is to, that you need to have a 50 close kin pair in your, in your samples, in your sample. Uh, if, if you have that, you will get a reasonable precision of your uh, uh, population estimates. Uh, yeah, and I should start with an acknowledgement here. And, and close kin in fisheries is really being developed by a group in, uh, in Hobart at the CSRO uh, um, <clears throat> under leadership of Mark Bramington. And a lot of the ideas that I've been talking about, uh, that I will be talking about here, has been developed in conversation with, uh, with Mark Bramington. So an outline of the talk here, uh, what is close kin? Uh, so this talk is going to be a tutorial for close kin or at least my, my view on it. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm, my current thinking is that we need to tie it as closely to the traditional uh, market capture uh, community so that we can bring them along because it's really very much of the same thing at, uh, that is going on in close kin that people have been doing in market capture for many years. So it's mostly, a a question about finding the a terminology that is close to what people are used to. And then uh, this, the last part is uh, what concepts do we need to develop uh, close kin software? And then one or two really powerful uh, software abstractions is what I think we should aim for rather than trying to make a complete package. Right, so then a brief uh, tutorial here, uh, ordinary market capture that most of you will know, but uh, just to get some terminology. So in <coughs> ordinary market capture, you need at least two sampling occasions, right? Uh, and here we sample, uh, so that can be, that will be a tagging, sample one will be the putting out the tags and sample two would be the recaptures. And uh, here there are two, uh, <coughs> two recaptures. And from that, uh, from those uh, simple numbers, we can apply the Lincoln-Peterson estimator to get uh, an estimate of uh, population size. All right, then close kin, uh, what is that? Well, first of all, you uh, use genetics to determine the relationship between the individuals in your sample. So that's a forensic style uh, uh, genetics. And by the way, this is not what I'm talking about today. Here I'm uh, leaving out all the problems with actually uh, uh, determining genetically the relationship between, in, between individuals. I assume you can do that perfectly. So that would be a completely different separate talk to do uh, to all the, all the genetic techniques involved. Uh, <clears throat> right, so then uh, the, the main methodological paper is uh, Bravington et al. in Statistical Science a few years back, which is outlining the, the statistical theory behind this. So in, um, 
um, uh, Bravington's uh, toy example is a, uh, is a situation where you have uh, juveniles and adults and um, yeah, right. You <clears throat> for this uh, close kin to work, you only need a single sample, and that sa single sample can be the catches. And of course, that's why it's uh, particularly relevant to fisheries because you don't need a tagging phase. Um, so here we have uh, six juvenile samples and uh, seven adults, and then you are uh, can determine the kinship between uh, this and we. In this sample, we happen to have three. Uh, three um, parent offspring pairs in the sample. So, uh, and from this, again, from these simple numbers, you can calculate an estimate of uh, population size, which looks very similar to, uh, similar to um, the Lincoln-Peterson. Uh, and uh, yeah, but w one difference here is that the population size estimate you get out is the adult population uh, size. And, but of course, the main problem here is that life uh, or reality isn't as simple as simple as we see in uh, this picture. Where this is just a this is a stationary situation with uh, a single sample taken of uh, juveniles and uh, 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 and uh, adults. Uh, reality is much more complicated, and that's what is making it difficult to pre to produce uh, to produce uh, general purpose software. So then, uh, the, the, the next thing uh, with um, close kin mark recapture is that, uh, yeah, well, so the, the, the recapture, so but let's uh, talk about the um, terminology here. So let's say if you're focusing on this individual, this is being recaptured, the recapture of this individual is being represented by this juvenile that is also in the sample. So this is uh, the existence of this individual is the tagging and then uh, it's being recaptured through its uh, sibling. So uh, that is the connection to the ordinary mark recapture. But um, <clears throat> the thing with uh, close kin is that you can have recaptures of different types because you have different types of uh, relationships and those can then be distinguished genetically. So that is also something we have to take into account uh, that you can have different types of uh, recaptures. Um, yeah, and the key problem uh, boils down to how do we ca uh, calculate the probabilities of uh, having recaptures of the different types. So um, that is the main challenge. Uh, uh, involved in uh, doing close kin analysis. Yeah, so these, uh, these recapture uh, probabilities, as I say, those are the main difficulties. Who, how do you calculate it? And uh, in simple situations, you can calculate them analytically, but in general, you do need to do uh, 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 more complicated uh, calculations. And let me here try to uh, explain uh, ho how they are calculated. And uh, <clears throat> This is an example of what Mark called, uh, calls uh, uh, a lexigram. And here we are uh, considering two individuals, Simon and uh, Mary. And uh, we are, the, the question is, what is the probability that Mary is uh, Simon's uh, mother, right? And what do we know here? We know the sampling times, both for uh, Simon and Mary. And if we only know, if, if we also know the age of the individuals, then we know wh when, the, when the two individuals were born. So then, <clears throat> in this situation, it's uh, okay. M Mary was born before, uh, uh, before, uh, before Simon, so she could potentially be uh, his mother. But the op opposite situation, when she was born after, then she couldn't, obviously couldn't have been the mother. So, um, so uh, then we would assign a probability zero. So that means age is extremely informative in the, about this uh, uh, kinship probability, what, or the recapture probability uh, in our terminology. So without, uh, without knowing the age of the individuals, all that we would know is that uh, well, Simon was uh, assembled here, and if Mary is going to be the, be the mother, she at least she has to survive from here to here. So calculating the probability sort of involves uh, that event. That's uh, what is driving the probability. So it's much more complicated, but it's doable. Uh, yeah. So how do we calculate a likelihood contribution from, uh, uh, from these kind of data? Right, and now I'm... Um, 
I'm trying to tie, in, tie into the ordinary market recapture terminology, as I say, and that is because I think uh, the, the general framework should developed, uh, be developed so that uh, both ter terrestrial and fisheries people can understand what is going on. It should, we shouldn't have a theory that is only applied to fisheries situation. So uh, let's, so that, then I'm targeting the cl classical market capture situation, which is like this. Uh, classical um, Cormac Jolly Sieber is being presented as the data presents data as capture histories. So this is the uh, recapture his capture history of individual number one uh, being sampled three times at different different occasions. Then we move on to uh, individual number two, and that has two uh, captures. Uh, and each of these uh, capture histories represented by different individuals then give a, produces a likelihood uh, contribution that you see here being multiplied together or uh, together over the different uh, capture histories and we get the total likelihood that can be used to estimate the parameters. So this is uh, uh, when you are able to uh, capture, uh, recapture in the, the same individual many times, but that's not needed in close kin. So in close kin, it looks looks different. So here, um, we also have a capture histories. So this is a, the first capture history. And each individual in the sample generate a capture history, right? So, and that individual that is generating the capture history will always be the black individual. And that's what I refer to as you. You are generating this first capture history. And uh, of course, and, and let, let's say that the, the sampling is lethal, like in uh, fisheries, then you cannot recapture the same individual. So instead, your, the recapture is being represented by a half sibling uh, captured later and a, a, a parent being captured uh, before. So then, uh, in the next uh, capture history, we have another individual, we call that you, and that's being, then that is uh, having a recapture by, uh, actually by an offspring some years later and then we move on. So here in this picture, the black fish will be, will be a different individual. So, uh, so each individual in the sample generates uh, its own capture history. So then it's creating a somewhat uh, uncomfortable thing here that this uh, recapture blue individual here in some other capture history that will be the black, uh, black fish. So you're sort of reusing data multiple times, but so that's a different story. But then in fisheries, you don't have many, uh, you, you don't find many kin, uh, kin re related individuals in, in the sample. So we are sort of uh, <coughs> uh, filtering out uh, a few other relatives here so that you, you typically will only have uh, for a capture for an individual, we, you will have at least one, uh, at, at most one uh, uh, relative in the sample. So many of these uh, uh, individual capture histories consists of only you being uh, captured with, uh, without any recapture, any relatives. Uh, yeah. Right. So then uh, let's know we are moving on to uh, how we are actually calculating the, the likelihood from, uh, for this data. And the key thing is uh, the key concept that is uh, allowing us to do that is <clears throat> uh, we are calculating the expected number of uh, relatives that you have out there in the population, and that um, and that expected number is a uh, is a year and a t age matrix. So it's uh, for each type of relationship. And here I'm uh, calculating, uh, focusing on the parent type uh, relationship. You're calculating the expected number of parents uh, um, at a different time in different age groups. Right, so now let's get the, the terminology right. That's uh, the key thing. Before we can start to make software, we have to have good concepts. Otherwise it's just, big, uh, it will be very messy trying to code this up. So you, uh, you are the tag. So you are tagging some relatives out there in the, in the population and it's easiest to see how it works with the parents because we know at the time where you were born, you had exactly two, uh, two parents uh, living. That's an in indisputable fact. So you, you, will, you would be tagging those two individuals there. And as time goes by, this uh, individual, uh, your parents would be potentially be dying. And you don't necessarily know the age uh, of the parents uh, at this time point. So, uh, you, but uh, you, you would know with probability one that you had exactly two parents. Uh, yeah, right. So um, to repeat this, you are the tag, 
uh, uh, once you know that you exist, you will be able to fill out this matrix of expected number of parents in each at each year and eat in each age uh, category. So, well, take me now, uh, for those of you who don't know me, you wouldn't know uh, how, how many parents I have alive uh, today, or I, I don't even know myself what, what will be the status in the future, but mentally we will, will we be able to calculate this, uh, um, this uh, fill in this matrix because we know about human uh, life history, right? That's five or 50? That, five, okay, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, right, and um, yeah, but so with humans, it's easy, we got good intuition, but that's what's interesting, be, be moving to uh, different species. Every species has its own uh, life history, and the key th uh, thing is to, uh, how to fill in this matrix, and it's, um, it's uh, yeah, surprisingly difficult in f finding a general way of find, uh, filling in th those matrices. It's, uh, it, it's possible, and that's, this is the main uh, software extraction we need to, to make in order, uh, in order to have a general purpose software to filling in these matrices, right? Um, yeah, and then comes the recapture, and uh, then it's, uh, yeah, I'll move to the next slide here. So how do we <coughs> calculate a likelihood contribution uh, out of this? We know the expected number of uh, uh, the parents you have uh, in the population at each time point. You know uh, the population uh, numbers that you know from some population modeling, and you know how many, uh, how many individuals you have sampled at each time uh, point in each age uh, category. So then, uh, yeah, then you are the likelihood contribution just uh, as in any tagging uh, experiment is just a comparison uh, how many individuals you have observed towards how many individuals you, you would uh, observe to see. And what we have observed, you have observed a single individual in this cell, and uh, we have, have observed uh, no uh, recaptures in the other cell, because this is the only, uh, this individual is the only parent you recaptured, and it was, uh, let's say, if you can determine the age of the parent, then, uh, then you know which cells it belongs to. So, right, uh, and, and you are able to calculate the expected number of uh, parents you would, uh, you would capture by the, using these three numbers, and then you, uh, so that's the expected part, and you have recovered one uh, parent here. Yeah, so then how does the software framework look like? Uh, <clears throat> so I'm writing here kind of pseudocode. Um, so uh, you define the population P, and uh, so you need to specify some uh, parameters for that population, and you basically, you need to write the code that is to fill out the population uh, matrix, right? And this is what people in fisheries are very used to. That's all what the population dynamic modeling is about, filling in this uh, matrix. But then comes uh, the <coughs> tagging part. So now you are the tag. And we know that once you have been, uh, uh, been uh, captured or tagged, that means that you are filling in this uh, expected number of parents by age and year. So, uh, and in order to do that, you need to say how old you are uh, when you were captured. You were one year and what you had of age one and you were captured in the first year here. Yeah, and in addition to that, to, uh, to fill, uh, fill in, uh, yeah, thank you. To fill in uh, this matrix, you need to you, you need to know general uh, properties of the population, survival and uh, and fecundity and stuff. So that's why this uh, the constructor for this tag that I call T1 uh, also needs the population as an input because all the these um, parameters are, are stored in that object. So once uh, yeah. So then uh, the constructor here is automatically constructing this uh, <coughs> matrix for us, and that is the main software abstraction uh, going on here. Uh, right, and then the rest is sort of easy. Uh, you, can, uh, you are then afterwards just going into the matrix, as I explained, uh, comparing to the population size and the sample numbers, and then you will be able to make a likelihood contribution from that. Yeah, um, right. So um, let me try to summarize this. Um, 
So the main difficulty that has to be abstracted away uh, is this construction, uh, construction of the expected number of parents by year and age. And you have to do this for all different types of uh, kinship that you want to consider. Um, right, uh, so that requires a detailed uh, knowledge about the life history for each individual species. And the problem uh, with generating uh, general software is that there are so many different life history uh, histories out there that it's, uh, you it's extremely complicated to cover everything. And the, uh, my other point is that, uh, so is it possible to produce uh, general software? Well, at least my uh, point of view is that sh it should be cover both terrestrial and fisheries, uh, uh, fisheries situations so that we can sort of uh, include a much larger group of, uh, of people uh, in the closed skin modeling. I think that was everything. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Hans. Um, any questions? Yeah, Andre. As Mark said, a few equations and a little bit of loops. Um, my yeah. lawyers have told you that. Uh, we'll get back to you. Um, I, I guess I just sort of take us through the, the, the complexities of life history because there are two dimensions that I can see suddenly becoming important here. One is presumably uh, birth processes, which for whales and sharks are sort of easy. But once you get into teleosts, you start to get horrible things like fecundity changing with size and age and time and all that. Is that uh, that? And then presumably natural mortality is the other side that gets into your probability of who is whose parents. Is that? How, do we know how? robust these methods are to getting those things wrong? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a right question. So in working out this probability that Mary is Simon's uh, mother, all of these things comes in. Yeah, and, uh, but, and it's even more, so you have, uh, uh, if reproduction is not regularly by year, those adds complications. What if the, uh, what is uh, the child is following the mother for 10 years uh, and the sampling is, uh, uh, is local sampling. All of these things are making it uh, more and more complicated. So th then the question is, is it possible to have a generic framework that it can calculate all of this? How robust are the answers? We're, you know, we're never gonna get this right to the level of accuracy that you're talking about. I mean, we've been doing this for a hundred years and age specific M still is something that you guess, right? Um, natural mortality by age, I mean, let alone by time. So the question is how raw, how biased is this estimator compared to, I mean, we're, you know, if you do a survey, you make assumptions, right? But we sort of know what the consequences of getting it wrong are. How, yeah. how far are people down the road of working out how accurate you need to know some of these things? Or is this really only gonna work for whales and Southern bluefin tuna? No, I think it's going to work more generally, but you need to, parameterize this flexible. So if you think that mortality is uh, age dependent, then you need to put that in. And you can, uh, and um, the group in uh, Hobart is, is doing that. They have, uh, they, they are using flexible models. And that, but then the next question is, uh, is data informative? That, uh, and, th that, uh, and that's actually a nice thing about close kin is that uh, the separation in time uh, of different types of relationships, uh, relatives are telling you about the mortalities and stuff and by age. So, well, um, well, I don't know the complete answer, but uh, so that's uh, things that we are working on. Yeah. Um, I actually, I think Hans has just given the answer. I don't know either. Um, close kin is so new. Um, are we depending on how you count the, the number of populations we've worked on, we've, we've done about five of these at CSIRO. Um, I know of one non-CSIRO um, close kin study, which was very scaled down. Oh, well, I'm not talking about the, well, Hans is in charge of the theoretical underpinnings, um, but in terms of actual applications, there haven't been all that many. And there, hasn't, there haven't been all that many simulation studies either. So one of the points I'm going to make in my talk, which is next is, um, here's what we know so far, here's what we don't know. Um, by all means, let's start thinking about a close kin module for a generic stock assessment model, but please be aware that there's an awful lot we don't know yet. Hmm. Yeah, Rich. Yeah, just to Andre's point, some of the, the wackiness 
is actually quite apparent even in the data. Like if you have half brothers and sisters and you only ever find them in even numbers, you pretty much know why they skip sporting. Uh, it was the same with SBT. It was different. It was in the parent offspring for a certain size range. There was only even numbers between the, the, the juveniles that you found. So some of, they give you a bit of a hint, and it's the same with some of the spatial. We've done some spatial close kin models in rivers where using the mitochondrial DNA, you can see that mothers are crossing, uh, mothers are from the same river, there's sort of, you know, what do we call it? Father Patrick, I know I'm not a geneticist, but, uh, and there is an imparent, uh, sorry, fathers. So some of the things sort of pop out in the sense that they're giving you clues about what your model probably should look like in the day. It's not perfect, but some of the, some of the wackiness sort of pops out in your exploratory data analysis. Yes, so Hans, I, I've got a question. So, Presume if you have to know survival, you have to know the, the fishing mortality as well of the parents. So presumably everything that's in a stock assessment model needs to be known to do a close kin analysis, right? Yeah. Uh, so in my pseudocode here, the first line is uh, th that's a full stock assessment model. And then you add, just add uh, the close kin uh, on top of that. Yeah. So essentially, you're going to have to have a general stock assessment model to do the close kin. So integrating the close kin analysis with, you know, like a general stock assessment model makes sense. Yeah, so it's, it's an integrated analysis. What I've explained here is just the close kin part contribution to the likelihood. And then one complication, if, if you want to do it integrated, it needs to be a proper likelihood contribution. And there are some complications there. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, Jim. Yeah, I don't know if it's covered, but could you talk a little bit about uh, uncertainty and maturity at age and also uh, selectivity if uh, captures are affected by those? Yeah, uh, I think you would ha have to parenterize that if you think it's uh, varying by age and then you would uh, try to estimate uh, those parameters. And um, whether or not they are estim can be estimated, that uh, depends entirely on the situation. So the question can be investigated by simulation or uh, as we are now working on, uh, uh, so the, you can look at the fisher information matrix. That's an approach we are uh, trying to use to, to see what parameters can be estimated with a reasonable precision. Hmm. Okay, anyone else? Yeah, Rick. This potentially is a question for the next talk, but I'll ask it now. Uh, given that you essentially are using a offspring to tag the previous existence of a parent, right? How do siblings follow into that? Because that presumably any of your siblings are also giving some probability of having detected your parent. Yeah, so, uh, so th this is you, and you are, uh, you are producing, uh, you, are, you will have potentially have siblings. So this is why I think it's best to think of the, the tagging of, for any type of kinship is happening while you are being sampled. Once you are being sampled, you will be able to fill in backward in time how many siblings you have at any time point and forward in time uh, at any time point. So you will have a matrix of siblings automatically being generated by you when you know that you were sampled at a special time. That's where the life history comes in. And the software extra, 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 abstraction is to fill in this uh, matrix automatically. So the user have, don't have to think about that because that, that's a difficult part. So if we could get there, it would be powerful. The patchiness of survival, yeah, what do you mean by that? If there was a whole lot of very young fish surviving from a spawning event here, so a lot of siblings got produced from some parents and very few siblings being produced by other parents, because this could be really patchy. Yeah, right? so that, that's variation in the reproductive success yeah, among so parents, yeah. I'm just thinking that that is the kind of variation that could some challenges. Yeah. 
Well, if you age yeah, the juveniles, right. you don't do those comparisons. That's the key. Is if you could estimate in theory that level of reproductive variability within that's basically within cohort siblings. That's telling you because you would usually expect an excess of that if you have that sort of process. But those comparisons where they were both born in the same year, you would usually expect an excess of those. There's one way to you either deal with that in a nuisance parameter kind of sense, you know, you add a cue for want of a better word, but most of the informative comparisons are coming when you compare animals from different birth years. That's when the half siblings become really informative. Otherwise, you're just crawling towards effective population size. Thanks. We'll break for.